brought to you by Jays. There is no such thing as a one-size-fits-all carburetor. Purchasing a carb that's best suited for what you will actually be doing with your car versus what you wish you'll be doing with it can make a large difference in your satisfaction level. Do you have a street car that goes to the drag strip once or twice a year? Are you bracket racing every weekend or just attending cruise-ins once a month? In this short video, we'll explain the things you need to know, why you need to know them, and what you'll need to determine the proper type and size carburetor for your application before you call JEGS. There are four different types of common carburetor flanges, which are determined by the intake manifold you're using. The most common style is a square bore, which is what a typical Holley 4150 or equivalent carburetor will use. Older GM factory quadrajet and some older OE Ford intake manifolds will use what's called a spread bore. A Dominator or 4500 series flange is wider than a square bore flange and is typically used on serious race engines. Then there's the two barrel flange, which will require you to check the center-to-center -center measurements of the mounting holes before ordering. Like your lawnmower or leaf blower, an automotive carburetor can also have a choke. There are two styles, electric or manual. An electric choke will operate automatically when the engine is cold. It needs to be powered by an ignition on circuit and will require adjustments seasonally to promote optimal performance in all conditions. A manual choke uses a cable and will require proper installation and operation. The cable will need to be pulled out every time the engine is started when cold and then pushed back in to open the choke plates once the engine is warm. Lastly, race carburetors typically don't use a choke at all. There are also two different types of secondaries. The throttle passages the carburetor uses during high load operation, mechanical and vacuum. Vacuum secondaries are typically used for street cars as they have the ability to modulate fuel supply at different input speeds based on the vacuum signal the carburetor sees from the engine. Conversely, mechanical secondaries are optimal for use with wide open throttle race applications. The formula we're using here will help you to determine the proper carburetor size for your engine. You're solving for the engine's airflow capability in cubic feet per minute. The RPM number should be the highest RPM the engine achieves before shifting gears, and you'll need to estimate the volumetric efficiency of the engine. A naturally aspirated stock engine's VE is around 70%, well-tuned performance engines are around 85-90% to efficient, and a professionally built race engine will be 95% efficient at its peak or more. For example, Let's calculate the right CFM for a 350 cubic inch engine with a 6,500 RPM redline and an estimated 75% VE. For this example engine, a 500 CFM carburetor would be a good choice for drivability and fuel economy. At this point, you should have a greater understanding of what's required to know when you're selecting a carburetor. You can check out the JEGS website or call us to pick out the carburetor that best suits your needs from Holly, Quick Fuel, Demon, Proform, Edelbrock and others. Each of the brands has different features and benefits, and now that you know how big your carburetor needs to be, you can decide which one is best for you. Keep in mind that proper carb selection is just the starting point. The manufacturers do a good job setting up carburetors to run straight out of the box for typical engines, but you can expect to do a bit of tuning for best performance and drivability. Stay tuned for more useful information from JEGS on getting your new carb dialed in. Brought to you by Jay.